Hello, Assalamu alaikum everybody. Hope you're all safe, sound and healthy. And I'm back because there is this, there is something that I really need to get off my chest. Um, you know, there's something that I need to make clear as well. Um, as we know right now, the hottest topic um, in the region is, you know, um, Moody and Nawaz Sharif. You know, Nawaz Sharif claiming that, you know, uh, he being a true statesman, um, you know, he being a person who was well liked well respected he was a person who could get along with anybody and everybody and that the biggest proof was that modi just flew in on a whim uh, to lahore went straight to his house at jati umra and visited him uh, you know uh, without any visa by the way without any protocol uh, protocol being the sops protocol that that is required for a prime minister to go into another country you know, you can't just do that on a whim. And he did it on a whim. And to Nawashif, this was something that was, you know, something to be proud of. And on the other hand, Moody, um, well, I mean, we all know that Moody is an exaggerator and a liar. But then we all know that the Indian government and its media are very famous for fabrications. They're famous all over the world. You always have to do a fact check after every single headline or every single news that they put forward. So one of the exaggerations made by Modi was that, you know, oh, I went and checked the security of Pakistan. Look, I went without a visa and there was a reporter who was saying, oh God, oh God, how did he come in? And, you know, so he exaggerated the whole situation, saying that I went and I, and this was, and Pakistan is my country. It was my country once upon a time. So, you know, I, I could just walk in anytime I felt like, and I can still do that even now. Okay, so first of all, the exaggeration here. Nobody can enter any country without prior information, without prior admission, without permission. Okay, um, so these these two characters, you have Nawaz Sharif on one end and you have Modi on the other end, both trying to, you know, uh, thump their chests for all the wrong reasons. Nawaz Sharif thinking that it was a great, great success in his part, a great achievement that Modi flew in um, without any security check, without any visa and anything because they are, you know, like brothers. And Modi gives this impression because obviously he wants to stay in power in India. He gives this impression that, oh, you know, look at my power. I could just fly into Lahore. Yeah, you couldn't even do that. Your, your army couldn't even do that during the war, by the way. So let's skip that and move on because you definitely did not come to Lahore without prior admission or permission. The establishment was aware, they were made aware, they allowed the authorities to let Modi land in Lahore and that is why he was given full protocol. If nobody knew he was coming, if he was coming on a whim, why and how would he suddenly have got protocol? I mean, you just need to think about that. If nobody knew that Modi was coming, if he came suddenly on a whim without any permission, without any, you know, protocol, without any formalities, how was he escorted to Nawaz Sharif's house with full protocol? I mean, it's just it's basic common sense here, okay? What, did he fly his car in with his chartered jet when he came to Pakistan? Did he just have his own personal chauffeur that he said, okay, drive me to Jati Umrah? Did he even know the way to Jati Umrah? So, you know, I hope that that's clear now. So Modi and Nawashif, both liars, both thumping their chests for all the wrong reasons and both actually showing to the whole world how stupid they are and how stupid they think people are right so that's an egg on their face each and now we move on to that other exaggeration of Modi where again he is trying to display his power uh, by making this you know by the fact that they were able to come into Pakistan um, and kill 20 people again let me remind you, right now our establishment are traitors, our very army, uh, they are committing treason. And one of the biggest treason 
the treasonous act you can say that they have been committing is working with anti-state foreign elements this is something that they've been doing for a very long time but now they're doing it very blatantly as we know Nawaz Sharif himself brought in raw agents by giving them work visa pretending that they were his employees in his factories and he facilitated them to commit terrorist to basically commit terrorism in Pakistan so rest assured this is all Osama bin Laden facade the charade going on okay remember Osama bin Laden has been killed three times now in history he was killed when Benazir was prime minister he was killed again uh, during Bush's tenure and then he was killed again during Obama's tenure so don't worry they can anytime just bring him back to life and kill him again if the next president needs it you never know Biden might suddenly revive Osama bin Laden and decide to kill him off all over again so that charade that drama of killing Osama bin Laden in Pakistan was also again fully fully facilitated at the orders of the then president Zardari who was again again illegal president made by America in Pakistan um, he ordered the army to allow the Americans to enter our airspace and then enter our land and then you know commit this whole drama of killing Osama bin Laden God knows who they actually killed it definitely wasn't Osama bin Laden so again it was our army that allowed the Americans to fly in drones and kill innocent citizens and once again it is our when our army uh, decided to just you know um, when they realized that the people were beginning to get really peed off then the army displayed their power by downing a few of those drones so now we have 20 people um, killed by raw agents in Pakistan this is not without the cooperation and facilitation of our own intelligence agencies keep that in mind it's never ever ever been possible in Pakistan for anyone to come and commit any such act without the facilitation without the joint cooperation of our own intelligence agency you need to understand that there's a pattern to it and there's a history of it so we've got these remember again whenever a raw agent has dared to enter Pakistan without the facilitation of our intelligence agencies they have been caught they have been caught before they can actually even do anything and they have been arrested many of them have even been deported back to India despite the fact that they should have been killed right off but the fact that our army would always treat them extra nice and then send them back to India with full protocol that in itself should tell you the whole story I mean the questions that come to your mind are exactly what you need to question yes and in the questions lie the answers why why is a spy being caught and then given tea and then being made to sit in a lounge and then being made to meet his family and then being sent back as a guest of honor to his own country just think about that okay so yeah that's another thing about Modi that you know we can just put across against those 20 people were not killed without the cooperation facilitation of the Pakistani intelligence themselves and again it is again because America's orders that they should be allowed to come in and commit these atrocities because remember America and India are working together to control manipulate and basically rule over Pakistan's policies as they've been doing with, the, with Afghanistan and in Afghanistan so yeah there, there there's I mean Moody is as big of a liar as Nawaz Sharif except that they they're both as stupid as the other no wonder they get along so well no wonder they're gifting each other's mother's clothes and no wonder they invite each other to their personal private wedding ceremonies of their family members yeah they are both as stupid as each other and they're both liars 
and i think that the indians uh should know better than that but i have noticed that the indians are basically i think they just can't be bothered like how there was a time when in pakistan people couldn't be bothered so they didn't care that nawaz sharif was being an a hole they didn't care that he was being a traitor they didn't care about they were like oh yeah these are all their politics let them let them go ahead and do whatever they want to hell with them this was the attitude of the pakistanis and i'm sorry to say this is still the attitude of the indians very few of them have woken up to the fact that no this needs to stop but in pakistan now people are fully awake and people are fully awake so yeah rest assured Pakistanis problems are not Modi or India it never has been remember the priority for Pakistanis and Pakistan has never been India but the priority for India and Indians has always been Pakistan you know that's why we call India Pakistan's ugly step sister our priorities are our domestic priorities our domestic issues India has never come into play have you ever heard of our prime ministers talk about India during the elections no we don't even want them to talk about India because we don't give it flying frats ass seriously so about india we we want to know what they can do for us here in pakistan that's all and we want to know how well they can help us maintain our sovereignty and we want to know when we can get rid of the american interference this is all we need to know when we want to elect somebody So yeah this is this this BS I hope I've gotten that out of everybody's system the BS between Modi and Nawaz Sharif and the BS about Modi and Nawaz Sharif you know um and also I've noticed in the past um you know not only have has India always made historically incorrect and movies they are also making historically incorrect dramas like this very famous hira mandi thing that's going on absolute opposite of the actual truth even the clothes are wrong uh, right down to the jewelry everything about whatever it is that they're trying to portray about the le- the very famous historic red light area of lahore is all wrong it's just like how when they made that movie joda akbar it was all wrong you know but then okay whatever makes them sleep well at night i don't know and i don't care because anybody who knows history knows that there is absolutely not even a percent correct in whatever movies the indians churn out and i think that's why also they've lost their appeal and charm um i don't remember when was the last time i watched an indian movie seriously it's been at least two decades since i've last watched an indian movie and i think that just tells tells about everything you know it 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 just tells you everything about what i think uh with regards to the indian film industry and in fact i haven't even watched american movies and a series for a very long time more than a decade again that's because you know the propaganda that that indians and americans churn in what is supposed to be the entertainment industry you know it's just beyond pathetic it's beyond pathetic um you can see the obvious brainwashing you know so the americans are brought up to think that russians and chinese and you know all these other countries are you know uh, that they they actually are brainwashed to think that america is the whole world there is no other world apart from america america encompasses the whole globe and that russia and china are on the opposite ends i mean that shows the level of ignorance of the people you know and or you obviously it's it's thanks to the propaganda same as with indians and in general in india they have no clue whatsoever about anything because of the incorrect historically and present you know um incorrect movies and dramas that they're churning out and the fact that india is so obsessed with pakistan is so clear in in their movies and in their dramas the fact that even when they talk about history it seems as if they can only talk about pakistan as if india does not have a history of its own um and that also puts me back to correcting modi again as well pakistan was never his country i i would like to once again remind the indians of the indian history where india was never one country india was a hundred little different states that were always at war with each other India was actually put together as one whole India known as Hindustan by the Muslims 
like it or not that's history it was the muslim empire that put together india as one whole nation and one whole country and as i repeatedly have said many times before that the british couldn't handle it the british couldn't handle it or maybe they just deliberately because in because the british the only way they knew how to rule the western world the only way they know how to rule is divide and rule divide and conquer they don't know how to you know enjoin states together they only know how to break them down you know so basically wherever and whichever country the europeans left those countries were once developed countries of their time the richest countries of their time and they were dismantled and they were broken down so that is the only thing at the end of the day that the europeans have to their name is that they could never handle a country no matter how big or small which is why every country that they have left is now divided and so india was never one country i'm sorry to bust your bubble modi really needs to go read a book of history it is the moguls the muslim empire the various muslim rulers that put india together as one and then continue to rule it as one country for a very long time until the british came and then as i said the british when they left the country had to be broken once again because that harmony was broken and so india now once again went back to a bit of its original state where pakistan and bangladesh are two separate states in india and india is should be lucky india should consider itself lucky that it still managed to maintain a large portion of that land as one country because the truth is that that country can break down any day any time due to any mismanagement and they can go back to the old days of warring states at least 20 20 separate states can automatically form any day and begin war against each other okay so yeah let's just stay on on track and let's just try to stick to facts well um with regards to imran khan more cases coming in bloody blah, blah i mean again as i said the reason i don't comment on imran khan's cases is because we all know what exactly is going on we all know that no matter how many times the judges will throw out the cases um the american planted the treacherous institutions of pakistan will continue to ensure that he does not get out of jail because they know once he's out they're all effed and they need to buy time. So I'm not going to talk about that anymore because I'm never going to be like others and say, "Oh, there's another victory of Imran Khan." Listen, these legal victories are necessary as I said before, I know about that, but what I do believe is that to me the day he comes out of jail and the day all of these people go into jail and get hanged for treason, that's the day I'm going to celebrate victory. And this is me signing out. Khuda Hafiz.